TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are <clears throat> not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK right behind me. Little warning screen just in case. Probably won't need it, but you know, it's there. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Username's at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon, UK TV shows, movies, and Premier Leagues. All week. When life means life, 25 killers who will never be released. You know, this is a this is a rare occurrence in the UK. So I'm here to check it out, man. Talk to me. This is what this is by Agent True Crime. That's the channel. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Reporting 20. The UK Ministry of Justice released a report in 2020 about the prison population in the UK. It states that the number of people serving life sentences in England and Wales has more than doubled since 1993. But when did what year was this? this? Three years ago? Does life really mean life? When giving a life sentence to a convict, the judge will specify the number of the f now let's 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 stop right now. No, let me hear what let me hear what this mean is. life. When giving a life sentence to a convict, the judge will specify the number of years that need to be served before that person can apply for parole. Although, this does not mean that the convict is guaranteed to be released, this decision is down to the parole board to decide when the minimum term has been reached. But there are exceptions to this, and the judge... That's crazy. I feel like in America, if you get a life sentence, they say life without the possibility of parole. You know what I'm saying? Or they say life with the possibility of parole, probably. But, like, it's... You don't get... A 28 or 21 it's it's 50 years down the line good luck you gotta appeal your life sentence out here maybe judge is able to specify people getting 20 years for a rico in the uk you get 20 years for for an m by a whole life tariff meaning that that person will never be released from prison crimes that are recommended for a full life tariff are as follows Oh, we get the exact crimes. Okay. The murder of two or more persons, where two? each murder involves any of the following. A substantial degree of premeditation or planning. The abduction of the victim or sexual or sadistic conduct. The murder of a child involving the abduction of the child or sexual or sadistic motivation. Murder done for the purpose of advancing a political, religious, or ideological cause. Murder by an offender that has previously been convicted of murder. At present there are 75 people serving a whole life tariff in the UK, and here are just 25 of them. My no, time out. You don't think that's ridiculous? But the minimum requirement is two. Two or more people have to be M'd for these A, B, C, D to 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 start to call, be in effect for the full life term bro i feel like one is enough with any of a b c or d why i gotta be multiple it has pre and why i gotta be a b uh, previously been convicted of murder at present there are 75 people serving a whole life tariff in the uk and here are just 25 of them Michael Smith. In 1976, Smith strangled to death his 18-year-old girlfriend Sheila Deacon after an alleged argument about his sexual ability. No. <laughs> what for? That ain't even funny. The reasoning is absolutely crazy. Michael Smith is wild. First of all, you're 35, she was 18. You was already hitting that curve. You might have needed a blue chew or something. You know what I'm saying? That libido was, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't there no more. And she probably was nagging at it, nagging at it, nagging at it. 
You wild for dating an 18 year old at 35. He was given a life sentence, but was released in 2005 after serving 29 years. In 2006, just months after he was released from prison, he murdered 35-year-old Peter Summer, attacking him with a broken bottle, at his home in Stoke. He stole over £8,000 from his victim, and took his girlfriend on a spending spree. He was convicted, and given a full life tariff. Joanne? Yeah, because the, the requirements, two in a row. Dennehy, known as the P- What that means is bro should have never got out. <laughs> should have never got out. Finesse the finesse he finessed the probation board. Got out because of these stupid rules in the UK and and M'd again. I think I heard her. Peterborough Ditch Murders, Dennehy was convicted of murder. Joanne Dennehy, known as the Peterborough Ditch Murders, Dennehy was convicted of murdering three men. These were Lukas Slabosvevsky, 21. John Chapman, 56, and Kevin Lee, 48, and dumped their bodies in a ditch. She was also charged for the attempted murder of two other men. After Wait, how'd she do all of this? Let me write her name down, Joanne. I don't know if we heard of her. Joanna Din Dennehy, huh? To picking them out at random in the streets. Her sentencing was delayed until the 28th of February 2014, when she was jailed with a whole life tariff, making her one of only three women to ever be handed a whole life sentence. Mark Bridger. Bridger was arrested and charged for the murder of five-year-old April Jones Very deserving. in McInthleth, Wales, and was found guilty on the 30th of May. Very deserving. They need to implement a death row for this man. 2013. He told police that he accidentally ran her over with his car, and that he could not remember where he had hidden her body. Although April's body has never been found, police found bone fragments and blood in Bridges' house, that matched April's DNA. John Childs Childs is an infamous contract killer who was convicted in 1979, for the murder of six people, including a police superintendent. Oh, he had no... he had no no conscious with it six but he's like a hitman m for hire is crazy although none of the bodies have ever been found he confessed to them after being arrested for a series of bank and security van robberies so wait why would he confess he was he was uh, he was tired bro was tired of living the way he lived in an attempt to get a lesser sentence, he implicated two others who were convicted in 1980, but they were both released on appeal in 2003, after his evidence was found to be fabricated. John Duffy, known as the Railway Rapist and Railway Killer, Duffy uh, we heard of him, we did a documentary on him, right? Duffy attacked and raped numerous women and children, in the south of England, between 1982 and 1986. He murdered three of them before the police finally tracked him down with the help of psychological profiling. Weirdo. He was sentenced to 30 years for two murders and seven rapes. After serving 12 years in prison, he admitted to a third murder and named Dave. He was sentenced to 30 years and for two M's and seven RAs and got 30 years? He got a possibility of getting out with all of that. The UK really be wild, and I'm telling you, that's not wild to y'all. David Mulcahy is his accomplice, and his sentence was increased to life. John. So on the third one, y'all was like, "All right, now you gotta stay forever." On the third one, Cooper, known as the Bullseye Killer, after his appearance on the game show, helped police to identify him as the killer in two cold cases. He was convicted in May 2011 of two double murders in Pembrokeshire. In 1985, he murdered a brother and sister before setting fire to their house to destroy evidence. In 1989, he murdered husband and wife, Peter and Gwenda Dixon, whilst they were walking along a coastal path. He was also convicted of over 200 burglaries and the rape and sexual assault of two teenage girls. Stephen Whatever he did, Stephen Port, he he did guilty. He looked guilty. This is the craziest mugshot. 
Port. Known as the Grinder Killer, he murdered at least four young men that he met on the gay dating app, as well as committing multiple rapes on others. In 2014, he lured 19-year-old escort Anthony Walgate to his flat, pretending to be a client. When he arrived he gave him the date rape drug GHB, and dumped his dying body outside his flat, before calling police anonymously to tell them he had had a seizure. He was charged with perverting the course of justice for lying about his involvement, and given an eight-month prison sentence before being released on tag. He then went on to murder at least another three. This is a very lenient judicial system, that's... ...and making it look like they had committed suicide. These were Gabriel Cavari, 22, Jack Taylor, 25 and Daniel Whitworth, 21. He was arrested and charged, and on the 25th of November 2016, he was sentenced to a whole life order, and was told he will never be released. I ain't gonna lie, man, whoever was matching... Just gonna say a quick pause, but this is like... Bro's hairline is gone. They look fun. Yeah, all right. Stephen Griffiths, known as the Crossbow Cannibal, he was convicted of. Crossbow Cannibal. Did we hear about him? He didn't actually do anything cannibal-wise, though, did he? Murdering three sex workers in Bradford in 2010. One of the murders involved the use of a crossbow, and he was captured on CCTV showing off to the camera, before dragging one of his victims back into his flat. He dismembered all three of victims, before dumping their remains in the river air. He also claimed to have eaten parts of his victims but this has never been proven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, we did this. I remember this. I remember that he claimed but they never proved it but they just continued to call him that. Robert Maudsley. Maudsley is we did a doc on him. known as Hannibal the Cannibal and is a serial killer who killed four people. He was convicted of killing one man in 1970 and given a life sentence. The other three of these murders were committed since being in prison. He also claimed to have eaten part of the brain of one of three men that he killed in prison, but prison staff told the media this was untrue. He has served most of his sentence in solitary confinement, in a glass cell to prevent him from killing any more inmates. Mark Hobson in, glass cell? in July 2004, Hobson murdered his 27-year-old girlfriend Claire Sanderson at their home. He then lured her twin sister Diane to the home, and then killed her too. He That's petty. That's bogus. Whoa. He fled and then broke into the home of elderly couple, James and John Britton a few miles away, where he batted them with their walking sticks, then stabbing them both to death. He then went on the run, but was arrested not long after. This sounds like he had a mental break, and he just started going crazy, he didn't, he just couldn't get a grips, grasp, grasp of what he had done. He was given a life tariff in 2005. Douglas Vinter, in 1990, well deserved, he needed it. In 1996 he was convicted of the murder of a 22-year-old train worker Carl Eden, and was sentenced to 9 years. He was re What? Wait, what? wait, what? 2-year-old train Vinter. In 1996 he was convicted of the murder of a 22-year-old train worker Carl 1996 Carl Eden, and was sentenced to 9 years. 9 years for an M. So what was the actual charge? It couldn't have been him. He had to plead it down to a manslaughter to get nine years. Like, I just, like... He was released on license and met his wife, Anne White. In 2008, he strangled and stabbed her to death at her mother's home in Teesside and was sentenced to a whole life tariff. You gotta remember, like, anybody who catch an M and did it, like, like, for real, for real, did it, they, 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 they're more they're more likely to do it again because they've done it before. They're like, oh, I caught one before, man. There's nothing for me to catch another bee. It's it's it's, it's not that much pressure, man. So that's like the thought process. Got to go. You got to think about that before you. Nine years was insane. He appealed his sentence in the UK and through the European Court, but was rejected. If I was the family, I'd sue. <laughs> If I was the family of Anne White, I would sue the the parole board, the judicial system, the government for letting him out 
and nine years for the Carl Eden murder to him. Because if y'all would have actually gave him the proper charge, the proper amount of time, he would have never met Ann White, would have never did any of this. Appealed his sentence in the UK and through. You could say that for most of these. Through the European Court, but was rejected. Jeremy Bamba. In 1985, Bamba shot dead his adoptive parents along with his sister and twin nephews at the family's home in Essex in order to claim a six figure inheritance. He tried. Money is the root of all evil, man. He, look, look at this guy. See, he killed one, two, three, four, five people for six figures. Ain't even touched seven figures. Six figures. To fool police into thinking his schizophrenic sister had committed the murders, but this was unsuccessful, and Bamba was charged with all five murders. His trial judge told Bamba that he found the idea of ever seeing Bamba free again difficult to foresee, and advised that he should serve at least 25 years. At least one home secretary has told And wait, after all of this, y'all still advised him to only do 25? Oh my god him that his life sentence would mean life. Michael Adabo Shout out to the Home Secretary, man. Lajo. On the 22nd of May 2013, British soldier Lee Rigby was attacked and killed by Michael Adabalajo and Michael Adaboale near his barracks in Woolwich. On the 26th of February 2014, after the High Court ruled that whole life sentences were still lawful, provided they were reviewed after 25 years, Adabalajo was sentenced to a whole life term. So who took them to court to even get into a battle that the whole life sentences weren't legal? Adebo Ale received a 45 year minimum term. Stephen Farrow, having a obs- Me personally, man, once a killer, always a killer. Accident or not. Like, unless it's manslaughter and it was a real accident, like some type of, oh, yeah vehicular or like a real accident if it was a real accident okay but like oh i accidentally stabbed him nah 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 buddy mm. self-defense is also different obsessive hatred towards christianity in term stephen farrow having a obsessive hatred towards christianity he was jailed in 2012 for the murder of reverend suddards aged 59 at his vicarage in bristol he told police was because he was sexually abused by a clergyman as a child. He also broke into the home of 77-year-old retired teacher, Betty Yates in Budley, and after beating her with her walking stick, he stabbed her to death. Philip Hegarty, in 2000... Sound like a... Well, most of these people are... All of these people sound like real cowards, you know, but... Him especially, the past one. In and three, aged 47, he beat his friend Derek Bennett to death with a hammer in Cardiff. He then wrapped his body in a rug and put it in a stolen car, before setting fire to it. His face was so severely mutilated that he could only be identified through dental records. He already had 79 convictions for violent assaults, including attempted murder, and was sentenced to a whole life term. 79 convictions at some point. You know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all need to do it like California, three strikes and you're done. 79? Violent convictions? You need to put him in like a psychiatric ward forever. He After the 79th one. Appealed his sentence in 2014 but was rejected by the appeal judges. Stephen Wright. Known as the Suffolk Strangler, he was convicted in 2000. 2008 for the brutal murder of five sex workers in Ipswich over a period of six weeks. He was sentenced to a whole life tariff. He was to appeal his convictions but decided to drop it months later. He is still being investigated by police in relation to other unsolved murders and disappearances in the area. Rose West. In 1995, West was convicted, oh, we West. along with husband her Fred husband West, too. of the murder of 10 women and girls in her home in Gloucester. Yeah, they were wild. The victims included one of her daughters and a stepdaughter. Her husband Fred West- mm -hmm. They was really wildin'. First they did the stepdaughter and then the daughter when she started, like, questioning. West committed suicide in jail before he could be tried for 12 murders. David Baxendale. 
having a string of convictions for knife crimes and drug offenses. In 2011 he stabbed to death a mother of three, 28-year-old Sarah Thomas in Surrey for refusing to give him a kiss. He fled the country and was arrested and- Bro, people be down bad for refusing a kiss? Extradited by Spanish police from Fuangirola. It later emerged that he had already served prison time in Spain for the murder of his friend. Rahan Arshad, having discovered that his wife was having an affair, in April 2006, at their home in Greater Manchester, he beat to death his wife and three children, aged six, eight, and- Oh yeah, he cooked. Oh, he cooked. He couldn't take that. He had a mental breakdown. He had a mental break and a lapse in judgment. The whole household got it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And why he looks so happy in this picture? He's at peace with the decision he made. That's crazy. In 11 with a rounder's bat. He fled the country and was arrested weeks later in Thailand and extradited to the UK. He told police that he arrived home to find his wife had killed their three children and then he beat her to death. All forensic evidence identified him as the killer of all four and was found guilty by a jury. He was sentenced to life, and the judge told him in this case, life means life. Desmond Lee, in 1989 in Bradford, he was convicted of the murder of his landlady Shirley Carr, after he alleged, she taunted him because his boyfriend had ended their relationship. Sorry. That is not funny. Let me stop. It, it's the reasons, it's cra that wasn't crazy. She made fun of him because they, his, 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 his 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 what shall we call it broke up with him he denied murder but was found guilty and was sentenced to life but was released on license in 2004 whilst still on license in 2009 that's what i'm talking about christopher pratt should, christopher pratt's family should sue the, the parole board the, everybody for letting that man out and he murdered a 51 year old civil servant after meeting him in a gay sauna his naked body was in a what? And what kind of wait, what kind of sauna? A one year old civil servant after meeting him in a gay sauna. His naked body was discovered by a jogger 11 days later, dumped on moorland near Huddersfield. He was sentenced to life and was told he will never be released. Lee Newell. In 1998 he was convicted of killing his 56-year-old neighbor Mary Neal in Norwich. He was sentenced to life. In 2013, whilst serving his sentence at HMP Long Larton, oh, he, got somebody in there. he murdered convicted child killer Subhan Anwar with a sharpened toilet brush hand. I mean, he might should get some leniency on the 2013 for Subhan Anwar. You know what I'm saying? Stuff happens. He was given a second life sentence and will never be released. Victor Dem. That's up for debate. Dembovskis. In 2005, Latvian immigrant Dembovskis murdered 17 year old schoolgirl Jeshma Raithatha. She was repeatedly raped and stabbed in the heart on her way home from school. He fled the UK and was arrested in Latvia and. See, this is why until my daughter is t like. I don't give a damn how old she is. I'll be waiting at the bus stop. <laughs> if you decide to take the bus, I'll be waiting. As a matter of fact, no, you're not taking the bus. I will drop you every morning and make sure I can pick you up. <laughs> We're not doing none of that. Extradite. We're not spending the night at nobody's house. We're not doing none of that. He was charged with her murder, and it emerged that he had already been convicted and jailed for a number of rapes in Latvia before he moved to the UK. So what he was doing in the UK? Was he vetted properly? How was he allowed into the UK with them type of charges? Like, He was given a whole life tariff. Unable to cope with the death of her sister, 12-year-old Nishma committed suicide by jumping from a car park. Mark Robinson, in 1970- What's the 
What's a car? Oh, like a car park, like a building that parks cars. Nine, when he was just 17, he strangled 33-year-old Patricia Wagner to death at her home in Billingham. Her lifeless body was discovered by her eight-year-old son. He was sentenced to 10 years and was released in 1989. When he was 17 because he was a young offender. Just seven months after being released, he stabbed his new 25-year-old girlfriend Sharon Morley to death because he found a photo of her ex-boyfriend and he became jealous. He was sentenced to life and was told he will never be released. Bro went into prison as a boy for an M. Did not have any type of like emotional control obviously because he was in jail like he's probably in jail young offenders fighting every day you know what i'm saying got out got a girl seen a picture granted why she still got pictures of her ex but you know what i'm saying that's neither here nor there it didn't deserve an m since being at hmp wakefield robinson has put five prison offices in hospital and is considered one of the most dangerous prisoners in the uk that boy acting bad in there. He really... He might as well. He ain't getting out ever. Dale Cregan. In 2012, 29-year-old grenade and gun maniac Cregan killed two female police officers, Nicola Hughes... We definitely know Dale Cregan. ...Hughes and Fiona Bone after they responded to a 999 report of burglary in Greater Manchester. The caller was actually Cregan, who was luring both of his victims to their death. He opened the door and immediately fired 32 shots at him, killing him both. He was up 32 shots? What do you have, a switch on? ...under investigation at the time for the murder of father and son Mark and David Short, but had been released on bail. During the trial for killing the two officers, he admitted to the other two murders also. Ian McLaughlin. In 1984 McLaughlin was jailed for 10 years for manslaughter, after he hit Len Delgatti over the head with a hammer. In 1992, he murdered a bar. How's that manslaughter? He went to court and argued, oh, I didn't know he was going to D.I.E. ...and Peter Halls, and was sentenced to life with a minimum of 25 years. He was released in July 2013, and on the day of his release, he tried to rob an elderly man. The day of his release. The man's 55-year-old neighbor tried to intervene, and McLaughlin slit his throat and he died. He was immediately sent back to prison and will never be released. What do you think about- man caught two bodies and got out somehow and, 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 bro, he's seasoned. He was a veteran at catching bodies and y'all let him out. The UK is wild, I'm telling you. It's really a wild place and sometimes I don't think it's a real place. But then I realized that I've been, you know, I've been deep diving for about seven years, six years, and I know it's real. That's still the, the the judicial system is still one of the wildest things to me, from as an outsider looking in. Though. 